My name is Allison Strine, and I make Ladybird. Ladybirds are a collection of quirky, sometimes playful, sometimes emotional stories and artwork drawn from my real life experiences. I started out not even knowing I had anything artsy in me. I was, you know, I wanted to work with horses when I was little and I was gonna be a blacksmith. Luckily, my mom kind of convinced me, just try college, Allison. I wanted to be an editor. So I ended up doing that for 10 years, I guess. And that's what brought me down here to Atlanta. I grew up in Boston and there was no, there was no editor jobs available. So I came down here and edited for a long time. Although editing is extremely creative, I just didn't think of myself as an artist at all in that way. And then one day my friend and I took our babies on a trip and she said, let's scrapbook this. So I became incredibly engrossed in scrapbooking and competed in scrapbooking competitions and won the, you know, won one of them. And you did? I, yeah, I did, honey. I, got the Hall of Fame. At the time it was this big deal, but I wanted to be published. So to get my work published in the magazines, in the scrapbook magazines, was a big deal. So I did that for a few years and that was fun. I still didn't think of myself as being artsy, but the, I, a little bit. And then um, I started painting. And at the time, Etsy was kind of a beginner place. One of my friends told me about it and I signed up, I think in June of 2006, which meant it had only been around for a year. And somebody suggested that I actually sell one of my pieces and I was so nervous to put something up for sale. But I did, I put it up and there weren't that many people on Etsy at the time. So if you posted anything, everybody saw it. You know, it was kind of cool. It was much easier to sell. So I put it up on Etsy and sold it and then at the time I wanted to do the soldering with the pendants so I shrunk them down anyway I be it became a whole business all because of Etsy it was pretty cool because then I turned into um, you know selling it wholesale also to different shops so that was kind of cool so now I'm in a bunch of shops This is one of the first pieces I ever made. Um, I painted the background and then I put the lady on and I kind of knew what she was saying but I, it felt too personal to actually put on there. Sometimes she went the whole day without putting on a bra. But that's what was happening. And I felt like I took a chance. It felt like taking a chance, putting those words on there. But I did and women kind of got it. I pretty much for all my pieces I'll scan them in and then um, play with them digitally if I need to like adding a saying sometimes or just now I, if I if I had scanned it in then I can print it out you know I can have it as a print to sell or a magnet or a pendant and almost I almost quit doing the business because I had such a struggle to get the, the right printer and the right inks. But finally I got, I don't know what it is. Epson, oh yeah, R28. It gives me a fantastic quality. I print on Epson paper, of course, and I use uh, matte paper so it doesn't have a gloss or a luster and the colors just pop. And I can, of course, I can adjust them. You know, I can add more saturation or less or whatever. I think this pink will look pretty. Yep, it does. Why not? For each of the pieces that I do, when I put them up on Etsy, I, you, it's important to give it a good description. So all of these pieces, when I have them tell a story, I write down the history of the story. So I, that might be kind of witty and silly. It might be very serious and emotional. It might be, you know, the different stories 
come from different places depending on the art. I try and make the line really thin, but it doesn't always come out that way. Sometimes I work on an 8 by 8 inch canvas, which is this one. I sell mostly the kind of stores that I sell to are boutique-y, girly, kind of funky, colorful. I sell all over the country, really. I'm in about a hundred stores all across the country. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. I feel like um, I have two employees, the dog and the cat, you know, they need to come to work with me every day and the dog always is jumping on my lap and running around and staying busy and the kitty comes over and ruins things every once in a while, Hilbert, but it's nice, I don't have to feel like I'm working alone. I love to have an animal with me all the time. Makes it much more fun. Oh. One of the best things about being an artist oh, wow. is that I'm lucky enough to have a huge space to work in. And of course, I can work in my pajamas, I can send the kids off to school and then come down and piddle paddle piddle, um, paint or whatever. Having, you know, a 13 year old and a 10 year old, I can still enjoy every bit of them, send them to school and come down and do my art. And sometimes I'll do the art with the kids, they'll come down too. But I definitely feel very, very lucky. And once you get to be my age, you, you know when to appreciate what you've got. And I know that this is a period of my life that I am so blessed to have. Oh. These ones don't fit anyway. Um, I have a book coming out just in, in a month. Uh, it's called Lady Bird Land, and I haven't seen it yet, but it'll feature my art with, this, with little stories that I tell. Sometimes I find myself wondering what the next thing will be when I get sick of doing ladybirds, um, but I don't know what it is and that's part of the joy.